Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. My name is Ramki Muthukrishnan and I head the recovery ratings and credit estimates for U.S. corporate. The year 2017 was a big one for U.S. CLOs, both on the broadly syndicated front as well as the middle market CLOs. S&P rated a total of 20 middle market CLOs for a total issuance of 11.9 billion. This compares to six CLOs that were rated in the year 2016. On June 11th, S&P published a report looking at the 1,200 or so companies whose loans collateralized the middle market CLOs. Joining me today to talk about the credit parameters and performance metrics of these companies on an aggregated basis are program analysts Colleen Sheridan and Aaron Gallagher. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So Colleen, why don't we kick it off with you. Can you talk about what a credit estimate is, and if you can highlight the difference between a credit estimate and a credit rating. Certainly. Well, like ratings, credit estimates deploy the S&P corporate ratings methodology and utilize the same score scale as ratings. However, unlike ratings, credit estimates are point-in-time scores and deploy lowercase letters to visibly differentiate themselves from ratings. Credit estimates are provided at the request of CLO managers rather than the companies or the issuers of the obligations themselves. Credit estimates are generated for non-rated issuers, typically for the purpose of including those non-rated loans in rated CLOs. Credit estimates analysis is abbreviated and unlike ratings are typically feature less information. Thank you, Colleen. The report talks about several credit uh, parameters and uh, some of the most sort of notable ones are, you know, leverage measures, uh, EBITDA margin, so on and so forth. Can you talk a little about how S&P calculates leverage and if there is anything you want to uh, differentiate from how the market calculates here? Certainly. So oftentimes our debt calculations and our EBITDA calculations will differ from the company reported calculations and that's just due to adjustments that we make to improve comparability between estimates and we similarly make those adjustments in our corporate ratings uh, analysis. So we want to clarify that in this publication the figures that are presented are the adjusted figures rather than the company reported figures and the appendix in the publication fleshes out our adjustments further but in general any adjustments that we make to debt and EBITDA are based off of whether we consider those obligations debt-like or those activities uh, operating versus not operating. So that, that's really an important point as to whether these activities in S&P's view fall in the purview of operating versus non-operating. Interesting. Can you talk a little about the company size, more specifically focusing on the debt size? Certainly. So for the year of 2017, for the companies that we completed estimates on, debt ranged from $7.3 million to $1.5 billion. So within that range, the median was $157 million and the mean was $198 million. In the publication, we decided to use the median figures due to the expansive difference between mean and median of around 40 million, and just to give a more holistic view of the middle market and limit any distortions and differences in deal size. That makes sense. Aaron, can you talk a little about the trends that we observed over the year for the companies on which we did credit estimates, especially focusing on leverage and coverage trends? Yes, well, consistent with the larger leverage finance market, we saw an increase in leverage ratios, as we did in our review of credit estimates completed in 2017. We saw an increase in leverage ratios in the second half of the year, as EBITDA levels and margins declined. Furthermore, coverage levels have remained relatively high due to low interest rates. And with recent interest rate hikes and the expected hikes in 2018, we expect coverage levels to decrease in 2018, thereby putting further pressure on companies whose coverage levels are already weak. So, so certainly the increase in leverage and, uh, and the reduction in coverage on account of uh, increase in interest rates is putting pressure on some companies and their operating performance. Can, can you talk a little about the credit estimates that were downgraded in 2017, uh, Aaron, and give us the numbers? Yes, of the companies we issued credit estimates for in 2017, which was around 1,200, 
Over 50 were downgraded over the course of the year, and of those, 15 were defaults. Based on our review, we found that some of the common drivers behind the downgrades were deteriorating operating performance, the state of liquidity, as well as significant leverage. We also found that the percentage of companies for which we completed estimates for with less than adequate liquidity rose from 9% in January 2017 to around 22% in December 2017. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Colleen. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today.